Live at Lunch is produced by KRFC 88.9 FM in the Ginger and Baker Studio in Fort Collins, Colorado, and supported by The Music District, a music-centric gathering place to cultivate talents, support professional development, and encourage connections. Welcome to Live at Lunch. I'm your host, Denny LaRue, and today we welcome Two Faces West. That you see. I said I'm not quite satisfied. The people talking and I don't know why. Do they even hear me? I said, I dig you, baby, don't you understand? Trying to look inside your mind Just wondering if you're one of a kind I'm just gonna know, yeah Tell me something more than just your name Tell me all your secrets, baby Now pick up off that little mind
Two Faces West right here on Live at Lunch. How are you guys? Great, Welcome. Man. That was hypnotized, Hello. right? Yes. So let's introduce the band. We have Kurt Ashmore on guitar, vocal, and saxophone. Yep. Hi there. Hi. We've got, we've got um, Mick Knudsen. I want to get it right with drums. And we've yes, got hello. Vince Caramelli on bass. Yes. Welcome. So you guys met at Gunnison State, right? And then relocated to Denver in 2015. Is that yep. Yep. Kurt and up I in met the hills back there? In our freshman year of school out there. Okay. So you spent some time up there together, and then you've been in Denver since. I wanted to ask you there was this uh, well known, well, I don't know if it was well known, but this 1960s Wild West TV series called Two Faces West. Anything to do with the name of your band? <laughs> yeah, that's where we got the name. How'd uh, you, what's the connection? So it was, it was shot in Gunnison. Um, and when we were coming up with a name, we wanted to have something that kind of tied us back to the valley. So um, we saw that there was a show shot up there, so we just used the name. It's a great name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. So you still get up there and you play every now and then, right? We do, yep. Yeah, yeah. But you're, you've been playing a lot of Denver venues, really like Bluebird and, and all of them. I mean, all of them uh, for the last bunch of years, which we'll get more into that. Um, and we'll talk more about your music. Let's hear another tune. What do we have next? Uh, this one's called My Kind. It's uh, okay, the first song great. we ever wrote, actually. Okay. It's all about Jesus. <laughs> Wow, wow, wow. 
Faces West. So tell me about your sound. It, people say um, electric rock and blues, a touch of funk, and some people even say a little Texas blues in there. Um, where did this come from? Who were your mentors growing up? What music were you into? Want to start, Vince? Sure. Actually, we kind of argue about the okay. actual genre. <laughs> uh, blues rock, country funk, maybe, sort of. Okay. We have these ongoing discussions of what exactly are we? Because we're not, we're not, you kind of get lumped in the traditional blues model. Right. But we're not a traditional blues band. Kurt has a great, great comment about we kind of interpret the blues. We're not actually a blues band. Uh, I think one commonality we all have is we all share those blues influences. My father took me to blues bars when I was 14, and that's how I learned how to play the bass guitar. I'm actually a trained piano player. And I sat there all night with my dad because I could legally go to a bar with my dad under 21 in Ohio at the time. And that's how I learned how to play. I just watched those guys till 2 in the morning after my dad picked me up from JV basketball games. And that's kind of how I learned how to play this. And, you know, once I got into that, I started getting into other things. And we all listened to other kinds of music. I like prog rock. I like, I like Irish music, um, you know. Mick and I got some favorite metal bands we like. There's just a lot of different things we like, and sometimes it comes into our music. And you grew up on it, though. You, you With your dad, you listen to it all the time. Yeah. Yeah. How about you? How are you doing, Kurt, music-wise? Yeah, I, uh, I grew up listening to a lot of uh, like classic rock on vinyl. My dad had a, a really big collection, so I'd sit down in front of the stereo and listen to everything. And, um, you know, as I, as I got older, realizing a lot of those take their influences from the blues, which then that turned me on to the, to get to the blues. Okay. And we, how about you, Mick? Any, uh, special influences? Um, you know, kind of the same as them. Yeah. I just grew up like listening to like stuff my parents were showing me. We listened to a lot of like eighties rock and hair metal and stuff when I was younger. Um, as I got older, it kind of transformed into my own influences and um yeah just a lot of stuff that i can draw from uh to come out in our music i mean anything really i think it all comes out so you guys overlap each other a lot in this but you have the same core so who writes most of the songs do you all write them it's a pretty collective effort yeah, yeah. everybody kind of comes through for different stuff collaborate and no uh, ideas ever really off the table okay Okay. I think the cohesive element is we all kind of want to write the same kind of music, basically. Uh-huh. Um, and as long as it's creative, like, we don't really have many arguments about songwriting, which is probably one of the best best outfits I've been in in regards yeah. to that. Like, there's no there's no a lot of infighting about who's getting credit. We just, like, let's come together and write up some good material that actually we want, and stuff that we want to listen to. Okay, and coming up in a few minutes, we're going to talk about your new music coming out. Right now, you've got a song called Dirtbag ready to go, right? All right. Oh, they call me a dirtbag. Nowhere to go. Oh, they call me a dirtbag. Living on your floor. Oh, they call me a dirtbag. Nowhere to go. Oh, they call me a dirtbag. 
sleeping in my car. You know we all been there before. You know I ain't got no money, living dirt poor. You know I gotta find some friends to say you can stay. Sit down and have myself a nice cold beer. Sit and think about things for a little while. Grow in the woods for a long, long while. Oh, they call me a dirt bag. Nowhere to go. Oh, they call me a dirt bag. Living on your floor. Oh, they call me a
Okay, a little retro, almost funk, drums, and guitar in there. That was really nice. Um, that's a great song, Dirtbag, right? Yeah. Yeah, I bet people get up to that dancing around. Absolutely. For sure. Okay. So um, I know musically you've been, you put out an EP a while back, and uh, we're playing that at KRFC, and you've got some singles out, and then the pandemic kind of slowed things down in the recording world, but you've been back in the studio recording, and you're expecting to come out with a new album pretty soon. Tell me about it. Yeah, so, yeah, we, uh, <laughs> Kurt, we started recording um, beginning of 2019, and um, we had a, uh, Vince came on as our new bass player at the end of 2019, and then into 2020, obviously, the pandemic kind of shut everything down. Um, so we've been back in the studio um, a couple times this year uh, to finish everything up, and hopefully sometime next summer uh, we'll have a, an album out. Okay, and it's called Postcard? Postcards from Lonely Places. Okay, Postcard from Lonely Places. And I hear that uh, one of our local well-known musicians, Jog Mandy, plays on a tune. Magna. Yeah. yeah. Good. You roped him in. So you've got to have a song on there that's New Orleans style. Yeah, we're doing one We're doing one cover song. We're doing a uh, version of an old, uh, old Zydeco song called Hot Tamale Baby. And actually, Kurt and I talked about it in the driver's seat of the car on the way out there on our first tour when I joined these guys. And I played him this tune. I'm like, man, we should just two faces west this song up. And he's like, yeah, I'm into it. So yeah, we put together a version. And, uh, you know, I called up my buddy. I'm like, hey, man, I want some, want some accordion on this. Who do you got? He's like, ah, John Mangy. Get him. <laughs> and he was great. He came out. He killed it. Sounds amazing. Uh, I can't, I can't, hopefully we can have him come out and play when we actually do a CD release party on that. We'll look forward to it. Okay. Postcards from Lonely Places, yeah. right? Next summer. Okay. From Two Faces West. I want to tell the audience out there that we've got our KRFC Radio Vision on our YouTube channel. And if you go there, you can Google it or you can go through the app. And once you go there, you can subscribe. And the nice thing is we've got live at lunch shows, all kinds of shows, and you have access to those through our Radio Vision, KRFC Radio Vision a channel on YouTube. So we really encourage people to do that. You've got a song coming up for us. What is it next? Uh, the song's called Vegas at 3 a.m. It's actually oh. based on uh, experience I had in Vegas. Oh, okay. It's pretty self-explanatory. Okay. It describes exactly what I saw. Oh, wow. Well, I can't wait. trouble than you so
You won't leave the same way you came in The same way you came in Everybody's got a place where they want to be Vegas at 3 a.m. is what it is No matter what happens next You won't leave the same way you came Vegas at 3 a.m. That was a true story, right? True story. Okay. And so then you got together and collaborated on the music. You had the story. Yeah, on that one, on that one I had the story. I mean, I think everything is definitely a collaborative effort. Yeah. We all bring ideas in, and we all make a Two Faces West, basically. Okay. And we are listening to Two Faces West right here at Live at Lunch. I wanted to talk a little bit about how the summer scene has been for you. I know you played the Bluebird and Cervantes. You've got a show coming up um, August 26th at the Alley in Littleton, right? And then you, you're headed to Vegas, oddly yes. enough, <laughs> and then Utah, right, in September, both those. So tell me about going on the road, playing locally, summer scene, all of it. Yeah, so we've, um, yeah, we've had a pretty busy summer, been kind of all over the map, um, still been trying to find the swing of things after, like, the COVID break um you know they were backlogged on a lot of the big concerts you know people scheduled during covid and then they got rescheduled a year out so once we got past that we're kind of finding our flow with booking but uh yeah last summer like we did a couple weddings um been on a few events this year a couple festivals um got over to the midwest for a few shows we did like four shows lincoln lawrence um, a couple spots in iowa um, again, yeah, headed to Vegas and headed west a little bit here in September. Um, but yeah, it's been pretty busy for us, 
pretty good. And uh, yeah, really just trying to find the swing of things after um, the COVID pandemic. It's been kind of strange booking and things have changed. It's gotten more competitive and, you know, just trying to find our place and all that. It's It's got to feel great to get out. And, and I know people really are ready to get out and dance and, and listen to the music. Yeah. So you played in Iowa. You have a special story about that, Vince, right? Uh, we played at this <laughs> pretty wild grateful dead bar in palmer iowa and it was you know we pulled into a town of 600 people and you don't see anybody and you know we're setting up and it's owned by this really great guy named byron and 20 minutes before we go on 100 people show up shoulder to shoulder <laughs> and this this place has just built up a reputation over the years that and people drive 70 80 miles on a sunday afternoon uh, mm -hmm. to go hear bands play and they were great it was probably one of the most intense audiences I played in a while. Everybody there is there to listen to music and only music. There's no sports on. There's nothing else. It's just people just want to hear you play your heart out. It was great. Wow. And they come from all the all over the region because like you said, 70, 80 miles they drive for the yeah. show. Wow, that's something. Yeah. And Kurt, how's it been for you this uh the touring and still keep you know, keeping on track with the new music and all of that? You know, it's been good. It it really kinda I think challenged us as long and also every other musician um that's been playing out when COVID happened. You know, as far as the album, it really put things on hold financially, um, which I think everybody was also in that position. Yeah. So it's it's felt really great to get back out there and play again and, and get back into the swing of things. So it was uh it was difficult. Okay. And so I will, uh, I'm going to remind people August 26th at the Alley in Littleton. And then you're on the road for a while and you'll let us know upcoming shows and album release and all of that. Yep. Okay. So we've got more music headed our way. What do you have for us? Uh, this next one is called Freedom. It's kind of a funky one. I think you'll like it.
sein. with some surprise endings, a couple of them here and there. That's great. Do you guys collaborate with anyone else on your new album besides John Magny? Uh, nobody else. I think uh, no, just he's, uh, Two Faces West and all the many talents of Kurt Ashmore, really. <laughs> okay. And that's uh, Postcards from Lonely Places is going to be the name of it. comes out next year. Have you been able to get out and hear some music yourselves or... You go down and listen to the in the bar blues bars, like you did with your dad. Yeah, my life's bit. a little busy these days, so. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm not getting out much uh, right now. <laughs> How about you, Kurt? You out listening uh, to some music? As much as I can, every once in a while. But it's been kind of the, the same thing, and you know, ticket prices are getting ridiculous too. So. Working and playing. Yeah, and yeah. Trying to. Yeah, I've been a big fan of the the Levitt Pavilion down in uh, South Denver. Yeah, I've been I've been trying to go to a few of their shows uh, out on the lawn they have a couple of, um ticketed ones i think some free ones as well and yeah it's yeah that's, that's a like a summer spot. night in colorado for yeah. some live outdoor music when you get a chance you know yep. it's good you've got funk coming up let's just get into it that's great the funk and this is on your ep right yes it, correct yeah okay Soho. 
called the funk and that's on your EP. Kurt, tell me about your vocalizations. You do the singing and I, I saw mixing in a little background there too um, now and then but would the it's almost like a scat you're doing but not quite right or um, I guess a little bit in, in that one just singing words really quick uh -huh. kinda, super rhythmically kind of sounds cool. Yeah and I, didn't you have it in another one of the songs almost like the wah wah Oh, the, the talk box? Is that what you're... Yeah, maybe that's it. Yeah. yeah, so uh, the talk box, um, the first concert I ever went to was Peter Frampton, and he uses one. Yeah. <laughs> and that really uh, hooked me, and I wanted to figure out how to do that. So, yeah, that's what that is. Okay, yeah, yeah. I, could, I could hear it. but mm -hmm. So I bet you're somebody who owns more than one guitar, right? I do, yeah. I've yeah. Got five or six. Yeah, I was yeah. going <laughs> to say, do you ever play acoustic, too, or strictly electric? Um. We, in some of our new songs uh, on this upcoming album, we have some that have acoustic guitar. Wow. Um, so, yeah, we're going to try to incorporate some of that soon. Okay. But up until this point, we haven't. So guitar is first and sax is second in your... Uh, yeah, mostly. I, I did, um, I majored in saxophone okay. um, in college. So I've been playing sax longer than guitar, but uh -huh. yeah, mostly guitar in this band. Mm -hmm. How about you, Mac, with bass? You always been playing bass? I started off in piano, so I took piano lessons for a long time. And, okay. And uh, the, the longer story on how I played bass guitar is I was playing keyboards in my brother's high school band. And they had a song where they wanted to switch instruments and nobody wanted to play bass, so they gave it to me and, like, learn this tune. And then I started, you know, my bass player, or the bass player at the time would leave his bass in the basement and I would sneak down there and start to practice on it. And then uh, <laughs> after a little while, I'm like, guess I got to get one. Went down to the used store and bought a bass and that's now my main instrument okay yeah. and mick you've always been drums yeah pretty much always drums i started a little bit later into high school but uh picked it up pretty quick and yeah it was always drums and uh picked up a couple other things like casually along the way but yep, yeah, all drums and did you guys actually get together at gunnison state when you were in college Oh uh, yeah, Kurt and I did. Yep, yeah, it was yeah. our freshman English class when I think they had everybody like going around the room, like, "Hey, tell us your name, a little about yourself." And you know, it's like, "I'm Mick. I play drums." He's Kurt. He plays guitar. And the teacher's like, "Hey, you guys should start a band." And then, and they little did I know, I was actually bridge. answering like an ad that they had put up in the dorm. So that's how it happened. But yeah, we were pretty okay. young at that point. <laughs> so it goes back a ways, and then they found you, Vance. Yeah, I'm the uh, I'm the new guy. <laughs> so I joined up into 2019. I responded to a Craigslist ad. Oh, cool. But you've been here for enough, a while. And uh, it worked. It worked really well. Yeah. All right. Well, we've got time for you're going to play Brand New Suit next. And uh, then, we'll, then we'll do a little break. And then you'll take us out with some instrumentals. So let's hear Brand New Suit from Two Faces West on KRC's Live at Lunch. Money. 
left of me and clocks on the right. You know I'm as a seven cause the suit fits right. I'm walking down the street. I'm gonna get that money. I'm gonna close the deal in my brand new suit. City to city, I hit a coast to coast. Money hanging out my backside is what she likes the most. Walking down the street, gonna get that money, gonna close a deal in my brand new suit. Travel to New York, Japan, and Spain, making so much money it's completely insane. Walking down. Brand new suit, Two Faces West. I want to remind the audience to tune in, please, to our KRFC Radio Vision on YouTube channel. And uh, when you go there, you can see this show. You can see a whole menu of shows. And we do ask our listeners and watchers to subscribe to our KRFC Radio Vision YouTube channel. Uh, the more people that listen better it is for everybody and all the musicians, so we can appreciate that. I also want to say thank you to Two Faces West for being here today, and thank you to our audience for watching today. And we have, it, you know, it takes a village to put on a live at lunch. It really does. So we want to thank our audio crew, which is Colton and Andy and Paul, and our video crew, Kevin, Eric, and Jeremy. So that's the village there. So thank you guys very much. We've got about... Um, five minutes left so i think you're going to take us out with soul riding is that right yep so you're looking forward to your travels to vegas and utah absolutely it's good some good shows planned there yeah. yep yeah and then the alley 
in Littleton on August 26th. Correct. To let people know. Well, thanks so much for being here today. And uh, yeah, thank you guys. Really appreciate you guys thanks, back everybody. in the booth. You guys are awesome. Thank you for supporting live, live music. <sighs> Absolutely. <laughs>
Thank you for listening to Live at Lunch, and thank you to the Music District here in the heart of Fort Collins, Colorado. Live at Lunch is produced by KRFC 88.9 FM in the Ginger and Baker studio. If you'd like to appear on Live at Lunch, email our music director, David Vosick, at david at krfcfm.org.